What's up, Cog Gang? All right, so welcome back to Static. So we got this problem here. So what we're doing is we're finding the normal force, the shear force, and the moment at point C. So I went ahead and I drew this basic free body diagram. It's not done yet, so we're gonna go ahead and fill it in now. So uh, we have this 30 kilonewton per meter moment force acting on the beam, and we also have this 10 kilonewton force acting on the beam, and we have A, B, and C. So we're trying to find it at C, and there's no support at C, but there are supports at A and B. So at A, it's a roller. A is a roller, so that means that A is gonna be just going straight up. So this is A of Y, we can label that. But B is a pin, so B is gonna be going up. We can say B of Y. And then we can say that B of X is pointing one of the X directions. So you can just pick a direction, and it'll work out fine. But what we can say here, uh, we can do some of the forces in the X direction. I'm not gonna write it out. But we're gonna find that B of X equal to zero, because if you were to take some of the forces in the X direction, we're at equilibrium, and B of X is the only thing acting in the X direction, so it has to be zero. So go ahead and say B of X is zero. So how do we wanna solve this, right? Well, if we wanna do that, we're gonna to wanna to take a cut at C, basically. We're gonna to wanna to take a cut here and pick one side. So we can either go left side or right side. So today, we're gonna to go with the left side, but if you want some extra practice, take the right side and make sure your answer is correct, you'll get the same thing. So let's go ahead and we want to find, if we're taking the cut at C and we're going everything to the left, we're going to want to find A of Y because we want to know all the forces that we can. Otherwise, we're going to be left with more unknowns and equations. So let's go ahead and find A of Y. So if we want to find A of Y, it's going to be best if we take a moment around B because it's going to get rid of B of Y and that way we're going to have only one unknown. So what that's going to look like, some of the moments at B is equal to zero, of course and some of the moments at B, so let's start over here. So we have this 10 kilonewton force, it's pushing down, it's gonna make this one rotate clockwise around B, so it's gonna be a negative, negative 10, and then its distance is 1.5 meters. Okay, then we have A of Y, so A of Y is also pushing upward. So it's pushing upward, it's gonna make this one rotate uh, clockwise, which is gonna be a negative number again. So it's gonna be minus A of Y, and then its distance is now 1.5 plus 1.5, which is three meters. Then we have this 30 kilonewton force going counterclockwise, so we're gonna add that. So plus 30. Uh, sorry, the marker's kinda white. Hopefully you can read that. I'm gonna switch markers now. <clears throat> so of course we're gonna move A of Y over, so you'll get A of Y times three is equal to 10, or negative 10, 1.5 plus 30. And you're gonna get that A of Y is equal to five kilonewtons. So this is because, you know, divide by three. So I'm gonna trust that you guys know how to do this math. Okay, so now we have A of Y, so let's make our cut and make a new force body diagram. So making a new force body diagram, it's just gonna be the left side, it's gonna be the cut at C. So this is gonna be our left, here's A, and then here's C. So we know that we have A of Y, is equal to five kilonewtons. I am holding the blue, so and then we know that we have this 30 kilonewton per meter moment. And then we have C here, so what happens at C? Well, if we're trying to find the shear, the moment, and the normal at C, we, let's draw those in. So if you take the cut um, of the left side, so we took only the left side, then the shear is gonna be pointing downward. So this is B of C, that's the shear at C. If you weigh the cut from the right side, the shear would be pointing upward. That's just how it's denoted, basically. So that's common practice. So normal of C always points outward. And then moment uh, is always gonna be pointing upward. So it's gonna start at the bottom and it's gonna point upward. So this is moment at C. So if you cut the other side, the moment would be going clockwise, but this time it goes counterclockwise at C. So there you go, so we drew these three. And now it's just taking some of the forces and moments. So let's go ahead and do all that. So this is the easiest part, it's basically just getting here is the hard part. So now we, let's, uh, let's find normal of C, so let's take some of the forces in the X. We know some of the forces is equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. And let's see, so we have only NC. So only normal is what acting in the X direction, and that tells us that normal is equal to C. Right, because it's the only force acting in the x direction, so anytime we take some of the forces in the x and there's only one force, you know it's gonna be equal to zero. <clears throat> so now let's do some of the forces in the y direction. So it's gonna be zero, it's gonna be equal to a of y, pointing upward, and then minus b of c. 
So of course you move b of c over, a of y is equal to five, so then you're gonna find that the shear force at c is equal to five kilonewtons. All right, so now let's take some of the moments at c. So some of the moments at c, we know that's gonna be equal to zero, because we're at equilibrium. So then let's add them up. So we have this moment at c that's going counterclockwise, so we're gonna add the moment of c. So then a of y is making it push this way, which is clockwise, so we're gonna subtract a of y, and then its distance is 1.5 meters, because I didn't write the distance, but this is 1.5 meters, this is 1.5 meters. And then of course we can't forget about this moment, which is also going uh, uh, counterclockwise, so that's gonna be a positive number, plus 30. So yeah. So of course you plug in a of y and you move f mc over, so you get mc, there's gonna be a negative change, so it's going to be 5 times 1.5 minus 30. And then, of course, you're going to find that moment of C is equal to negative 22.5 kilonewton meters. And there you go. So those are three answers to this problem. So it's pretty simple. It's just about making the right cut and getting to the answer. Once you have this, it's easy going. It's just stuff you've already done before. So there you go. So if you're having any trouble with this, I have a lot of videos on the topic, so feel free to check out my channel. And I'll see you there, guys. So peace.